Hey guys, what's going on? I'm Ryan the Amateur Dad, and welcome to my YouTube channel. This is the very first YouTube that I've done. Well, let me rephrase that. It is not the very first YouTube that I've done, but it is the first YouTube I've done where I'm more in a vlogging style. You may have seen some of my Tech Time videos where I go like real quick and go through some cool things in IT. And that's what I'm about, IT. Well, yes, I do like other things such as music, music, and more music, and video games, and anime, and I am also a father and a husband. But more so than anything else, I'm into IT. I work in IT. I pretty much live and breathe IT. I even sleep it sometimes. I dream about IT a lot. That's where usually most of my ideas come from. And today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about five things that can help you get started on your IT journey if you're new to the field. When you first start, a lot of the times you're like, okay, I have to go out and get this expensive computer. I have to go buy an Apple computer. I have to go buy the most expensive Windows PC. And while sometimes it does help, your hardware is important. Don't get me wrong. You can kind of, you know, play around at first. You know, you don't have to get the most expensive computer when you first start. You don't have to have the new and best and the greatest gear at first. Eventually, it helps because that is what you may come across. Actually, that's kind of a lie. You may not come across the newest gear when first starting because a lot of companies have older hardware. But that's besides the point. It's always good to stay up to date. That is something that you want to keep in mind. But when you first start, you can have a more normal or basic computer, especially if you have these five items that we're going to talk about today. Now, a prerequisite, you know, something that's important, you do need a, I don't want to say a fast computer, but it'll make your life easier if you have these things. If you have a laptop or desktop with a solid state hard drive, even if you get a you know hard uh, laptop or a PC, a desktop that doesn't come with a solid state, it is very, very easy to install a solid state drive. And now you can get one for as cheap as $20. They are low. And it makes a loads difference when starting. You know, your startup is a lot faster. Booting programs is a lot faster. It just makes your life a lot easier in general. Also, you, what do you want to keep in mind or what you want to keep in mind is... You want to have at least 8 to 16 gigs of RAM because you're going to be running a lot of software. You're going to be running a lot of virtualization, which if you've not seen my tech time on virtualization, check it out. I will throw the link below or I'll link it in the video if I can. We'll see what happens. But yeah, you want to make sure that you have that amount of RAM because pretty much what that RAM does, that controls how much you can have open at any given time. And when using virtual software, which is what we will be talking about today, that will be one of the items, it does take up some of your host resources. Host. Your host is your PC. That is your hardware. That's the PC that is in front of you. So keep that in mind. So you want solid state drive and 8 to 16 gigs of RAM. Those two things will really come in handy. And other than that, we can really get started. Oh, and you do need an internet connection, obviously. I'm hoping by now everyone has internet. I'm hoping by now everyone has internet. If you don't, that's a different story. <laughs> but yeah, so let's get started. We'll go on my computer and we'll take a look at some of the software you can use today. All right, cool. Okay, hey guys, we're back. So now I am gonna share my laptop screen with you or well, what I'm doing actually is I am doing a screen record and then I'm just gonna put it into the video. You will see me looking down a lot at this point because I'm not the best typer in the world. I do hunt and peck sometimes. So, you know, if it seems like I'm being rude and not looking directly at you, I'm sorry. I'm looking at my computer, but you guys should be looking at the computer screen anyway. Not me. Computer screen. Not me. And my computer is right here, as you can see here. I'll show you. See, that is my computer with all the stickers on it. Okay. So, yeah. So what we're going to do is we are going to fire up Google Chrome. That is one of my favorite browsers. I do use Chrome, but keep in mind, Chrome does use a lot of resources. It does use a lot of RAM, um, which we did talk about earlier. You will have a few tabs open, and then you will see you are using 12 out of 16 gigs of RAM, which has happened to me, which has crashed my computer before. And this computer is running 16 gigs of RAM right now. So, First thing we are going to look at is VirtualBox, which is made by Oracle. What that is, that is a virtualization software. Again, if you haven't seen my tech time on virtualization, check it out. The link will be below. This will kind of give you a walkthrough on how to install. I'm not going to show you guys how to install it today. I am just going to show you where to find it. So 
we're going to go to VirtualBox. You can just Google it. It's The website is www.virtualbox.org. I will also link that below. Um, you just go in. It comes up. You're going to go over to the left of the screen, and you'll see where it says Downloads. You want to make sure you click Downloads, and then you just want to look for what your host is. Again, your host is whatever you're running on your actual hardware. So whatever comes up when you first turn your computer on, that's your host, and that's your platform package, according to VirtualBox. So like we're using Windows, so we're going to go to Windows. But it does work for Oracle, and you can see at the bottom of my screen, it is downloading. I don't need it anymore because I already have it, but yeah, so that is VirtualBox. Something else you can use is VMware. We're going to Google that too. And VMware has a lot of different options. They have a bare bones, I believe it's called, bare metal, one of them. I always get them like switched up. But they have that. It's a hypervisor. And what that does is you install that on your PC. And that is your, that's your operating system. And then you can remote into it and you can run multiple, multiple OSs. So it's virtualization, except you're hosting it and you're not using like a bunch of resources on your computer for it because it's just running Linux. And if you don't know this, Linux does not take a lot of resources, which we will talk about in a second. So we'll get around to the different kinds of Linux. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to open up Edge because ESXi, it does not work well in Chrome. You can't send a control alt delete for some reason. I guess they know about that. I would like that to be fixed because I would prefer not to use Edge. But you see that site's not secure. You can ignore that. The site's secure. So pretty much this is my homepage or this is where I log in. So I'm going to go root and then my password. And if you guys want to see a video on how to actually set this up, I will definitely show you. It's not hard at all. But pretty much I made this because this lets me create my own enterprise in a way. So if I go over here to virtual machines, you see I have two right now. I have a server and I have Windows 10. These have both been running. So what's cool is even after I log out of this web host, they still run. So I can pen test them and everything like that. Now, that does take a little bit of networking knowledge, which we're not going to talk about in this video because that will take a lot. That will take a lot. That can be a video on its own. If you guys want to know, you can ignore that pop-up. Sorry. I know OneDrive is designed in. You'll probably see pop-ups all the time on my screen. But yeah, so we have Windows Server and we have Windows 10. So pretty much if I click Server and go here, it's already up. It's been running. It takes a second to come up. And so if this seems like this is taking a long time, it does, but also it takes nowhere near as long as it if I didn't have a solid state. I have a solid state in this laptop. And if I didn't, it would run super slow. But yeah, so I can go here, control alt delete, and there we go. That is my server. So let's say I log in. Uh, may help if I type in here. And there you go. This is my server. As you see, I am running a totally and completely different OS on top of my OS, except the only resource I'm using is the fact that I'm using a web page. So that's not going to kill my RAM the same as if I was using a host or if I was using like VirtualBox or VMware, something that is locally hosted on my machine. So like, let's take a look at VirtualBox real quick, which I do have a lot of those as well. So exit out of that, minimize that. We're going to go over to Orco VM VirtualBox. My background also is Obito. That is a Naruto reference. Like I said, you guys, I am a huge anime fan. Obito is one of my favorite characters, but Itachi is a god favorite. But yeah, anyway, I digress. As you can see here, I have a lot of different OSs here. So I have Kali Linux, which we'll talk about in a second. I have a Apple Box, which is hard. You kind of have to tweak a little bit to get Apple on your PC. If you guys want a video on that, let me know, comment, and I will definitely do you know a quick walkthrough. Um, so let's go ahead and I will bring up, you know what, here. This will take a minute, but I'll bring up my OS X. Let's do Sierra. So Sierra is, I believe, three, three generations ago of Apple, which right now actually the Apple yeah, you'll see all this pop up. Sorry. The Apple conference is going on right now, and I'm mad that I'm missing it, but I wanted to do this for you guys since I have the time. 
But yeah, so you'll see all this come up. It doesn't usually take this long with any of the other virtual boxes like Windows or Linux because it's not as much. Like I said, I had to go in and tweak a little bit in the command line just to make this work. Um, again, if you guys want to see that, make sure you comment and I will go ahead and do the video for that. So what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to fast forward this just so you guys don't have to wait because it'll take probably a little bit. And then once it's up, I'll be back. Okay, guys, we're back. So as you can see, it's coming up. This is an Apple, you know, box. This is, this is an Apple machine. I have this running on a PC right now. So, what, so this is why virtualization is so cool. So if you guys want to do this, let me know, and I will show you. Okay? As you see, Xcode, that's just what I named the box because I think I was doing this for a Swift project I was doing. I can't really remember. Honestly, I haven't used this in a while. But, yeah, it's coming up, and there we go. You have a full working Apple machine. And yeah, it'll, it'll blink out a little bit for when it's first coming up, just because it's not an official Apple, you know, system. But yeah, everything works. You can have terminal access. You can have everything. Cool? Awesome. So yeah, that is virtualization. That is something important you should get. Like I said, it costs nothing to get on your computer. You just go ahead and download it. Let me know if you guys want to know how to do this. I will link everything down below. Okay? Uh, okay, so the next thing we're going to talk about is Linux distributions. Linux is an open source software or operating system. It runs pretty much the world. You should definitely learn Linux. If you don't, you're just hurting yourself, really, because now companies want everyone who can do, want everyone to at least be able to do the basics in Linux. Not a lot, but it it's important to know. I never heard, I remember when the first time I heard about Linux, it was before I even got into IT. It was when I was on a school paper and I was talking to someone who was in our office and he was like, hey guys, have you guys ever heard of Linux? That, that's exactly how he sounded. I'm sorry, I'm an asshole. Have you ever heard of Linux? It's, it's the future. You know, everyone should use this. And I was like, yeah, man, whatever. And four or five years later, when I finally decided to get into IT, oh look, I need to know Linux. So I'm sorry, guy who was in our photography room. You were right. I was wrong. But let's go ahead and take a look. So we've already bought up Google. Let's open another tab. And we are going to just Google Linux. Now, there are a lot of different distributions of Linux. And actually, Googling Linux was a mistake. The two we're going to talk about today are Ubuntu and Kali Linux. The reason I want to talk about Kali Linux is because I am in the security IT security, and that is what almost all IT security professionals use. It's for pen testing. It really does help. We're not going to really dig deep into that today because if you're just starting, you don't need to touch that right now. But yeah, Ubuntu, everyone uses this when you're first starting. It's a very good desktop software. It looks great. It's easier if you're moving from Windows to Linux, you know, to try out. It's easy to navigate. It's fun. But pretty much, you just want to go to Ubuntu.com, like we have here. Go to Download, and you can choose. You don't need server. You don't need cloud yet. You can just use Ubuntu Desktop. That will get everything, you know, going for you. Now, you need to determine if your system is 64 or 32-bit, because that can cause a problem. Um, if you have an issue trying to set this up, let me know. Look at my virtualization video. I do go through the setup of this. And then after you do that, if you're having issues, reach out to me. I will answer. Um, but yeah, you just download it and you put it into a virtualization system. If you guys want to know how to do that, let me know. I will help you. I know I'm saying that a lot, but I will help you. You guys just have to comment and I'll do it. All right? Cool. So the next thing we're going to talk about is... oh. Windows evaluation software. Now that one, that's a good one. So we're going to Google Windows. Most companies run on Windows, right? So you should know how to use it, like the ins and outs. And you may not want to do, you know, you may not want to mess up your own system and nobody has money to keep buying different versions of Windows. So Microsoft has an evaluation center. And this is officially through Microsoft, which is awesome. 
So all you have to do is you go to this page, Google Microsoft Evaluation Center. It's the easiest way to go. I'm not even going to say what the link is because I don't feel like it, but I will link it down below. Everything I talk about today, I will link below. So pretty much you're going to go here. You're going to click Get Started. Are you ready to start your evaluation? Get started. Of course you are. So you're going to go here. And as you see, it has a lot of what Microsoft uses or what you can use in a Microsoft environment. You have Windows, you have Office, you have Azure, you have Windows Server, SQL Server. These are all important things. These are things that you should at least touch. You know, you should definitely know how to use Windows. So pretty much all you do, go to Windows, you can choose Windows 10 Enterprise. And what it'll do, it's going to take a second to load. It'll give you a 90-day evaluation. And the cool thing about this is you can keep doing it if you really want to. But you choose ISO, Enterprise, hit Continue. And then you just fill this out, and then you download it, which is really awesome. It makes life a whole lot easier. It really, really does. Make sure you do this. You know, do it. I will do a video if you guys want showing how to set all this up in a virtual box. But once again, look at my virtualization tech time video. That will pretty much explain how to do this. It's the same for everything, except Apple, which we'll talk about. Or not talk about, which we'll do later. So there's that. Let's see, what else? Let's take a look, because I don't remember what the fifth thing was. Oh, so you saw Azure Cloud. Now, this is something I don't know a lot about yet, because it's new. But right now, the industry is going towards cloud management. So you have right, set up. You see, it's loading. It's loading. It's loading. Let's see. There we go. So I don't have an AWS account, so we're going to go create a new account loading sorry i think my wi-fi is horrible in my office so yeah <laughs> all right so let's go there and i may speed up a little bit of this just so you know you guys don't have to sit here and watch the whole time or just wait twiddle your thumbs but so here this is what we're gonna do we're gonna go immature dad at gmail.com make a password dad all right so let's go ahead and continue I guess my passwords didn't match one All right, so we're going to do that, and let's set this up. Do never, and I could do personal, professional, but we can just do personal. And that's my wife again. We're going to mute that. So, image your dad. I'm going to go phone number. Uh, I will blur this out, or you know what? We'll just do seven seven three four zero. You can call that number if you want, but that is a very old number. I don't want to do that. Let me do that. Let's see. I guess I have to. So we're going to do 526 West Deming Place. Again, old address. If you want to come see it, go right ahead. Yeah. 614. All right. We read it. No one actually ever reads the terms and conditions, but whatever. We're going to create an account and continue. Ugh. This part, I do not feel like doing. So, yeah, we're not going to do that right now. And I'll blur that out too. So, but yeah, so this is AWS. It doesn't actually cost anything. It looks like they'll take a dollar just to verify your card because the way it works pretty much is you pay as you use. And so, you know, you build this infrastructure and pretty much you're paying for bandwidth, for lack of better words. That could be the wrong wording. If it is, I'm sorry. But we will go, I'll do a setup once I do all this, and we'll do it together. Sound good? Awesome. Let's move on. So the next one is something that everyone in IT uses and no one ever pays for, WinRare. <laughs> now, no one ever actually pays for this, ever. So you just go here, and you want to make sure you go to the right one because keep in mind, you never pay for WinRare. You should, or you can, not you should, you can pay for it, but no one ever does. So like, watch. So if I go here, you'll see it comes up for me. 
And you'll see right here, it says evaluation. I've had this for like years. I've never bought it. I hit close and it lets me do whatever I want to do. So you don't really need to, you know, do anything with that. <laughs> you don't have to pay for it. it. It helps. Pretty much what it does is it unzips your, or not unzips, it, if you've seen a dot rare file, pretty much it turns that into whatever it's supposed to be. So like if you get a rare PDF, it will turn it into an actual PDF because pretty much a rare file is gibberish without this. All right. There's other ways to do this, but this is the one that I use on my Windows box. Yeah. So that's WinRare. Now let's check out. That was five things, I believe. But I have one more. And this one I'm kind of iffy about. Because I guess it is kind of, it's, it's piracy, if I'm being totally completely honest. But I'm a firm believer that everything in IT, as far as knowledge, should be free. But I also understand that authors need to make a living. You know, they put a lot of work into their books and they need to make money off of them. So what I would say do is, if you're going to use this site I'm going to show you, still buy the book even if it's the PDF, what I do is I only use this site. It's called scanlibs.com. I only use this site after I've bought a book because I still like to have a physical copy, but sometimes I need to have a digital copy and I don't want to pay for both. If I'm being totally, totally and completely honest, I think it's awesome that some textbooks come with digital copies. If they do, I won't go to this website, but pretty much scanlibs has pretty much every it book you will ever need. Data Science with Python, that is a good one. I may actually grab that. But yeah, so you can come here and you can search for anything, for any IT book that you've seen, and usually they have it. But please make sure that you support the authors. Please make sure you do that. That is very important. Please make sure you buy these books. They put a lot into them. And I'm going to plug one of my friends. And when I say friends, I met him on Instagram. I, start, I learned about Kali Linux from him through his books. And then I just happened to come across his Instagram. I told him I was a big fan and we've had, you know, contact with each other. He's, you know, helped me with a few situations and I actually just bought his new book. What did I do with it? Here it is right here. It is called security testing with the raspberry Pi. This is an awesome book. I will be doing some labs using this on, you know, at a later date. And you guys should get this. It's by Daniel Diaturli. I know I just butchered your last name. I'm so sorry. His, uh, his handle on Instagram is at CyberArms. He's awesome. He's approachable. He will reach back out to you if you reach out to him. He, he's a great guy. So please make sure you support him by this book, especially if you're going to go ahead and do the Raspberry Pi Labs with me because a lot of the security Raspberry Pi Labs I will be doing in the future will come from this book. And that was with his blessing. I already told him about it. So yeah, make sure you do that. All right. And then I'm going to give you another bonus one. Scanlibs was bonus one. Bonus two, Python. Let's go ahead and go to Python. You Google Python. Python is a scripting language. Everyone should know Python. You want to make sure you get it. It's totally, completely free. It's an easy scripting language. It's a good first programming language, and it's free. You can download everything you need from here, the libraries, repositories, whatever you need. Go to python.org. If you want help setting this up, go ahead and leave a comment. I will do a video for it. All right, guys? And with that, we're done. Um, thank you for paying not paying attention. Thank you for watching my first YouTube video. This, you know, it's, I've been dragging on this. So I'm glad you guys watched it. Please go ahead and hit subscribe. That would really be great. If you like this video, hit like. If you don't like this video, hit dislike. Comment. Tell me you don't like it. Tell me why you don't like it. Tell me what you would like. Tell me what you would like to see. I will do it all. Um, if you guys are on Instagram or on Twitter, please follow me at Instagram or not at Instagram. I'm sorry at the immature dad. That's it on both of them. Um, I follow back. I am someone who likes to talk back and forth. I'm around. And yeah, that's it. Again, if you liked what you saw, hit that subscribe button. And thanks, guys. I will see you next time. All right. Peace.